Okay, cool, thank you. Um, so, I am uh, Chris Wood. Um, I'm from uh, EBCC at the University of Edinburgh, and I am here presenting this on behalf of um, a new organisation called Research Data Scotland, um, which I will go into more in a minute. Uh, so uh, this is mainly a collaboration between me and the data acquisition manager for RDS, who is David Jack, uh, Rob Baxter, who's um, head of all things data at EPCC now, and Roger Halliday, who is, um, has a split role between being chief statistician for Scotland and the chief executive for the new RDS organisation. Um, this talk really is, um, I guess, part talk, part validation to make sure we're not doing anything stupid, and um, part, hopefully, discussion about kind of how to make this kind of project uh, more effective. Um, so I should probably say what RDS is. Uh, it's a new organisation um, which is meant to offer a single point of contact for helping access public sector data in a safe and cost-effective way for research purposes. So basically, that's a very long-winded way of saying it's the Scottish Government trying to um, do what data.gov.uk does, but for um, for kind of uh, data which can't normally be publicly uh, published. Um, it's equally owned by the Scottish Government, PHS and Edinburgh University, um, through some complicated legal stuff which I have no knowledge of. Um, and then PHS also run a, or have a department called EDRIS, which is the Electronic Data Research and Innovation Service, and they provide support for researchers uh, in accessing data. So when researchers want access to uh, medical data in Scotland, they have to go to EDRIS and then EDRIS give them the forms and then it all goes off to a public uh, panel and then a panel approve or deny it and then the researchers get the data eventually. Um, and then EDRIS and EPCG jointly run uh, the, uh, the Scottish National D Data Safe Haven, uh, which is a trusted research environment. So those of you in the satellite meeting yesterday will know all about those. Um, and the aim of a TRE is to provide very secure compute to store and process data. And there was a debate yesterday whether trusted research environment is actually the best phrase or not. So that's a different debate, I think. Um, so, and then NRS do linkage. Um, so unlike any other of the devolved nations, um, Scotland is very good at, at, at linking individual record data from um, medical health, uh, medical health, uh, education, um, and, and other records to, to try and work out who the same person is from different types of data. Um, and then the Scottish Government leads data acquisition um, with an with internal department. Um, and of course, we can't do this alone. Um, so uh, combining data sets is really NOS's uh, forte, computing infrastructure is EPCC, and analytic services to researchers is kind of us also, um, but a bit of Idris and a bit of other people who hopefully will be coming on board soon. Um, so RDS is kind of basically building on all that stuff that's already there, but to put it all in one place. Um, some of you will know about the EIDF, which is the Edinburgh International Data Facility. Um, that's been developed at, at EPCC with um, uh, Regional Development Agency money and City Region Deal and Scottish Government money and various other funding sources. Um, and we need to use the expertise that exists at NOS for the linkage and build the national data infrastructure. Um, blah, 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 that's not particularly interesting. This, this, so for the background, this is all the kind of background info I got sent to, to put it all into context, which isn't, which isn't particularly interesting. Uh, and it's a signed collaboration with uh, all the regional safe havens, of which there are four, um, to improve service offered to researchers and connect data and widening reach of expertise and hopefully simplifies and standardised approaches, which is the goal of everything, right? But, but often doesn't work. Yeah, we, we've all seen that XKCD comic of of there were 15 catalogues we need one more so to standardize them now we have 16 catalogues um so how will <laughs> and, and <laughs> ironically how will people know what data is available because we're going to build a new catalog um so current state is, is that we do have a minimal viable product um and we've got it based on secan which some of you will know some stuff about and some of you probably know more about it than i do um we're basing the data on um uh, DCAT AP, and I'll talk more about that. And we've got a controlled vocabulary to hopefully 
standardize what people think of the data and how they kind of tag it. We'll also talk about that. Um, we have a roadmap for bringing in new data and how we're going to organize the catalog and is the scheme is efficient and uh, how are we going to encourage people to um, do user testing and uh, is the searching and everything, whatever, like good enough. And, uh, yeah, and because it's a software project and this is a software engineering conference and obviously we're going to do agile change management because that's what everybody has to say they do. Um, so, CCAN is a data catalogue uh, bit of software, open source, very good, generally. So, normally it works out of the box, uh, but don't make the mistake I did and try and ship it, uh, try and deploy it on a non-supported OS because uh, you might find that some of the dependencies in the OS are not that compatible and that was um, quite a lot of my time that I'm never going to get back. Um, so if you deploy it right at the box, that's just what you get. Uh, you get a nice kind of front end, nice UI, uh, UI you can, with a search box by default and you know stuff that you can configure fairly easily um, through a UI or um, in code. Um, so you know, with a VM and, and a bit of and a bit of um, installing dependencies in about half an hour, this is what you get. Uh, it's really easily easily customizable um, and because it is open source and it's kind of modular then um, they've got a, uh, a list of extensions that people have written and, and um, put on an extension website. So the first thing I did was to deploy an RDS theme. So themes are also extensions in, in CCAN uh, jargon. So what I did was just make the standard UI look a bit prettier and put in all the RDS branding and you know another couple of days of work and this is what you got. Um, so, advantage of CCAN, um, it does data set and metadata harvesting, which is pretty good, especially um, even better when it's, it's all CCAN, so it can talk to other CCAN instances, but it will talk to, to uh, other catalogs which are not CCAN. Um, it's open source and it's got a fairly active GitHub repository, quite a big community, active development. Um, I think it's, it's good that it's used in high-profile projects, and that gives it kind of a bit of a... Um, uh, Gravitas, really, um, and it's got actually got a pretty good API. So if you want to do harvesting or publishing of data, then um, then it's pretty good for that. So, <laughs> CCAN challenges. Um, so it's good that it's open source. It's also a challenge that it's open source. Um, not many people develop it as a part of their full-time job. There are actually a couple of people in the cabinet office who do um, in London um, and various people in the world, and they have just this year. Um, employed a community manager who I've had a chat with um, who is you know, his job is to try and like work out what 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 needs to be done in the next iteration for the next version of CCAN and that means at the moment there's not really any proper comprehensive support there are a couple of companies who do a bit of uh, who, who who you can pay to do some support but um, I've no I don't know what you know, I don't know the experience of, of of how good they are so I won't go into them um, as I've already said, some releases are reliant on uh, versions of dependencies and OSs and stuff. Um, it is a pretty large and complex code base, so what you might think would be easy to modify in the UI is not. Um, <laughs> so I also spent a lot of time trying to change things which um, I got into a massive rabbit warren of quite horrible Python. Um, Python 2 to the migration was quite slow, unfortunately. Uh, and, then, and then they're trying to migrate libraries as well, and that's also quite slow. So they, they migrated from Pylons to Flask, but then released major updates when they had half Pylons and half Flask, which was a bit of a grim task, trying to work out which whether I needed to write new Pylon or new Flask, because it wasn't really documented very well. Um, and I've said that extensions may become stale, um, and what I found is that on the extensions website, you know, you, you look at people who say, oh yeah, we've, we've done this really cool thing, written an extension, and you go and look at the GitHub repository, and the last update was seven and a half years ago. Yeah, yeah, great, okay. So I don't actually know if it's, if it's any good anymore. Um, so our current status, MVP, um, we've got metadata from four organisations imported, uh, National Record of Scotland, which I had to do manually with the uh, UI in CCAN, which you know, is, is time-consuming but quite easy. Um, Scottish Government Import, uh, which I had to write some, I, I didn't, one of my team wrote an ingest script from supplied CSV, so some fairly simple Python because the API is pretty good, as I've said. Um, and then Public Scotland and the Health Informatics, 
Health Informatics Centre at Dundee, which is represented here, I think, somewhere. Um, publish their data on the HDR UK gateway. Uh, so we harvested it, harvested their metadata from there directly. Um, so uh, what we have started to do is to import the data dictionaries or, or what you might call structural metadata. So that's the metadata which describes what's in the data set rather than describing the data set. Um, and I've already said we've got a theme extension created and a schema extension created, which I think is the next slide. Maybe. So a quick tour of CCAN, what we've got so far. So we've got 72 data sets imported, or found, or whatever. Um, so uh, the JSON logo there just implies that the, um, the data set has got a resource, uh, so an extra file uh, associated with it, and that's the file format that it is. Um, the resources, in our case, are not data. They're the structural data, structural metadata. Um, we've got four organisations, I've already said, so HIC, NOS, BHS and the Scottish Government. Um, and if you go back to that, if you click, um, so this is the data sets for Public Health Scotland, and if you click on one of them, which I think uh, is the top one, then this is what you get. You'll see again that you've got the data dictionary um, uh, as a resource um, in, in JSON format. Um, the additional info there is the, uh, the metadata schema uh, properties, um, uh, which uh, there are a lot more than, than that. So that's the list of, of metadata properties um, that we have, um, that we want researchers to, to add in. Um, some of them are mandatory, but I'll go into that in a sec. And then if you look on the data dictionary, um, JSON, then at the moment we just uh, publish it as a um, ad verbatim file, which is not particularly e uh, useful for, for most researchers, but it is there, so we've fulfilled kind of an MVP goal. Um, we have had like comments or complaints that researchers don't really understand JSON, but I think that's, that's more of a training exercise for us. Um, and then resources also have their own metadata. So this is metadata about the, the, the resource file as opposed to metadata about um, the data set itself. So I've said we're using a metadata schema. Um, we're using DCAT, um, so it's a W3 standard, uh, and it's got properties for uh, five different parts of the um, of the of the pipeline really. So it's got a, a schema for the for the data set, um, but it's also got a schema for the catalog, um, a catalog record, um, a resource, and a data set service. Which I've never quite understood what a data set service is versus a data set, but. In fact, I think Neil might know. Um, so, you <laughs> so we've extended DCAT. So the, the European Union extended DCAT by creating DCAT EP, and that adds in a few more properties, and it also makes in a, um, uh, adds in a, a few more recommendations about which properties are mandatory and which ones are recommended. Um, and that's really good enough for our needs, except in one aspect. So we've extended... DCAT AP again, just for, this is what DCAT AP looks like, you know, uh, this is a simplified version, so I won't go into it, but it is pretty complicated with lots of properties, with lots of linkages between lots of different aspects of, um, of uh, the different components. Um, so we've extended the DCAT to create DCAT AP EIDF. AP stands for, uh, uh, I've forgotten, I should know. I'll, I'll come to me in a sec. Uh, and the reason we've only extended it is because we need to add in data tags, which is uh, a way to state whether a data set um, can be publicly uh, viewed or not. So at what, what's a privilege level or what security level? It might not just be because it contains medical data, it might be because it's commercially sensitive or, or anything like that. But there are, there are effectively at the moment five categories which are all given a colour as to how open the data can be. So we needed a, to, a property to, to, to signify that. Um, and we know that there are data owners because data owners are very uh, careful in, you know, they, 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 they curate their data very, very carefully. And they, they often don't think that the very high level schema that we've provided is good enough for their data set, for their, for their poor little data set. But this is meant to be a high level catalog for findability. So in fair, this is just about findable. It's not about any, well, yeah, mainly about findable. Um, and, 
and it can be a signposting service for other domain specific um, catalogues, um, which is why we, we don't really care that it's not domain specific. Um, so uh, we need to make sure that themes and keywords of data sets are managed. So that's analogous to, to like going to a library. And there were very few cross domain um, controlled vocabs, which made my life easier because I didn't have to decide which one to choose. I could have picked the most obvious one. So we chose FAST, which is a faceted application of such a technology, which is uh, derived from uh, the um, Library of Congress subject headings. And they've got 1.7 million titles, blah, blah, blah. No, hi. So I walk a girl and it's linked, and that's, that's an important thing. So it means that uh, um, if you've got two terms which can be derived from different domains, so geophysics can either come down the environmental sciences route or it can come down the physical sciences route, and there are other linked terms which are related, um, so it makes it easier for data controllers to choose other relevant terms. And I've also created a really simple proof of concept query tool uh, because the querying on the OCOC website for FAST isn't great. Um, uh, and I've just done a, a fairly simple one uh, which can go down the hierarchy of FAST, hopefully to make it easier for people to work out what, what terms they need. Um, I've only got about four minutes left, so I've already said we're going to work with the four RDSs. And similar work ongoing with um, the Scottish Centre for Administrative Data Research and the Scottish Government um, Data Management Team to ingest some of the data that they have. And this third point is probably the same thing that every other developer of a high-level catalogue um, has a question about. So what other public data do we want to be do we want to catalogue? So within Scotland, there are other domain-specific catalogues. Do we want to catalogue data that's already catalogued? But uh, or, or do we just leave it in domain specific ones? Um, do we want to catalogue data that, that should be catalogued but isn't, etc., etc.? Et and then the, there is an overlap with EIDF. So EIDF, the, the, the Edinburgh International Data Facility, is going to have a data catalogue of its own um, to ingest data from other domain specific organisations and, and, and uh, research. Uh, Programs, so the interesting ones here are kind of tourism and transport and, and satellite and things like that. Um, so that, that work is ongoing. It's an overlapping project, but, but different funding and different, uh, yeah, different politics. Um, catalogue options. Um, I've shown you that the structure metadata is basically at the moment just JSON, and we can add it as a resource. Should we integrate those in a bit more of a user-friendly way or not? Should we just teach people that, that it's available as an API and they can download JSON and whatever? Uh, that's more of a question for the community rather than a, that I haven't really discovered the answer to yet. Um, and then open data can have resources added in a similar way. Uh, CCAN's pretty good at um, parsing common file types. Um, so it will enable data to displayed. So if you've got a Word file or if you've got a PDF, then it'll embed those automatically in the browser. Um, and it's also got graphs and maps that you can um, embed via extensions. And therefore, you could make a pretty simple dashboard if you wanted to. Um, so schema suitability, we wanted to keep as close to um, all the standards possible. And again, it won't align with a lot of data controllers' needs with, with detail. And therefore, we won't iterate on a frequent basis. There are other data catalogues, domain specific ones, which uh, every time they get a request saying, oh, you can't deal with my data, they iterate and they add in a new schema. We're not going to do that. Uh, so we'll, we'll publish a schema so people can understand what it is. Um, and we'll take on board and discuss concerns. That does not mean that I will change it. And uh, DCAT is very high level. Um, we could introduce fields, and I've already said, that does include uh, increased complexity because you need to think about namespaces and and things like that for properties. And anybody who's done anything about metadata will know about that. Um, I've only got one minute left. So um, is search first, which is the Zcan default, the best approach? Do researchers know what they want to search for? Probably not. Um, is hierarchy, uh, hierarchical uh, searching better? Perhaps we need to do some user testing um, and do other users such as policymakers and journalists and, and other people who might want access to this data have different needs. Um, 
And as well as the API that I've already mentioned, CCAN has got a, a way of doing Sparkle querying. So if you know anything about Sparkle, uh, you can get the data out that way. Um, so it is still considered being in beta. We've also thought we don't want to be a web host. We sh maybe we should just be a data provider in the same way that data.gov.uk is a website on, on the front end of the CCAN. Uh, uh, catalog that, that runs it and maybe final comment we might want a schema less catalog internally that can support multiple other catalogs and they all the people that I have to try and collaborate with to make all this come together and that's it thank you Thank you very much, uh, Chris, for the talk. We've got a few questions on Slido. I don't know if you want to just read them out oh, for yes. the recording. Uh, so, do I plan to interact in any way with HR UK? Uh, yes, in as much as uh, we can harvest data from them, um, but probably not in any, at the moment, not in any other way. Uh, you touched on the data access control as being part of the scope of your work. Um, do you have to deal with the authentication and authorization that would then be required to apply that to data sets? No, <laughs> thankfully. So um, that, that comes under the remit of Idris. Um, so they, they kind of determine who can get access to, to different data sets. Potentially, it does depend on funding. Um, so at the moment, all the, uh, so, so I'm the service manager for the catalog and I'm the technical lead. Uh, the technical lead involves funding about about a third of my time, so I'm managing about a third of my own time, and that's that's all the development time we get at the moment for this. Uh, so yeah, ideally, but but watch this space depending on funding. Uh, what are the barriers to improve funding for CCAN? Um, good question. Um, I guess a, a lot of the development so far has been um, completely uh, because of. of public money, so things like the Cabinet Office have put a lot of money into it, uh, and other, other uh, European agencies. Um, so, you know, given the, given the <laughs> public spending uh, at the moment, I don't think there's going to be a huge uh, effort for uh, increasing funding. Um, I would like to see it. Uh, I think it will probably need somebody to write a really good research grant um, and, and talk to the new community manager about how we can, how, how we can use existing grants and funding sources to improve that. Um. What the plan is, I think that's all we have time for. That's right. Um, maybe we can take the other questions off fine. So can we thank this again?